Hello guys and welcome to today's Q&A session Ask Mania or Ask I.O. So today we will answer a couple of questions about feature selection. A lot of you ask me about the feature selection, what feature selection methods you should use on your data science projects and so on. And let's go and answer that questions. So the first question that I got is what is actually feature selection? So feature selection is one of the most and core concepts in machine learning. Uh, uh, so you'll be using feature selection before uh, implementing the machine learning model. So if you do it properly and good, so your accuracy of your model will be pretty much good on. And if you don't do it properly, then your model performance will be uh, lousy or even uh, really, really bad. So feature selection is really, really important. And it, depending on that, your model will have a bad or really good performance. Okay, so, so feature selection and data cleaning should be the first and, and the most important part uh, before doing machine learning modeling. Yes, we know that we have a couple of uh, automated uh, feature selection uh, techniques, but beware that they are not so accurate. So the way how you can do a feature selection properly is that you have to have a domain knowledge from that particular case and the problem that you want to, uh, to resolve with a machine learning solution. So that will be the, the, the best way. Okay, so the next, next, next question is uh, how to select features and what are the benefits of performing feature selection before modeling your data? I'll mention a couple of them. So you, will, you need to reduce overfitting, you need to improve your accuracy and you need to reduce training time. So that are the three features that you need to implement in order to have um, what are the how to select features and what are the benefits of performing feature selection. Okay, so the next question is uh, what are the couple of feature selection methods? You have univariate selection, you have feature importance, and you have correlation matrix with heat map. So these are the one of the feature selection methods. And I will leave in the comments more resources about all of these uh, methods. Okay, and let's go for another question. So the next question is, of course, uh, why feature selection? So, so why don't we give all the features to the machine learning model or algorithm and let it decide which features is important? Uh, why? There are um, two really important stuff to why don't we do that? The first one is, of course, the curse of uh, dimensionality or overfitting. The other, uh, the another one is, of course, garbage in, garbage out. Uh, if you are not familiar with the term what is garbage in, garbage out, it means the poor quality input will produce poor quality output. So you need to think that your data needs to have, it needs to be quality, quality, quality data. So you need always to think about quality, not about the quantity. And in 90% of the projects, you will got uh, a lousy data and then you will perform data cleaning on that data. So, so you will spend probably 70% of, uh, of your time in order to, to select uh, the proper variables, to clean the data and so on. So that's really, really important. And based on that, your performance of your model will be bad or really, really good. Okay, so what can we do? So we have a few. So the next question is, if you can divide the feature selection methods, can you divide in some of the parts? Yes, we can divide it in the filter based, in the wrapper based and embedded. So we have three of them. And filter based, for the filter based, uh, we specify some, uh, some metric and based on the filter uh, features. An example of such metric could be correlation course, or a key, uh, key square. Uh, wrapper base is meta considered the selection of a set of features as a search problem. Example is, of course, I think so, uh, recursive uh, feature elimination, yes. And then we have embedded. So embedded methods use uh, algorithms that have built-in feature selection methods. For instance, you have lasso or, or random forest. So I'll use a lot of time random forest for feature selection. Okay, so... Uh, uh, once again, some of the methods you can use person correlation, you can use key squared, you can use, for example, um, 
of course, recursive feature elimination, you can use lasso select from model, or you can use rebase select from model. So this one is uh, again embedded methods. As I said before, embedded methods use algorithms that have built-in feature selection methods. You can also use a random forest to select features based uh, on the feature importance. Uh, and we can calculate importance using uh, mode in, mode uh, mode in, in, mode um, impurities in each decision tree. So in random forest, the final feature importance is the average of all decisions uh, of all decisions tree feature importance. So for the features feature selection, you can use random forest. Um, you can also use a light GBM or an AG boost object, um, like as long as it has a uh, feature importance uh, attribute. And it's really important that you have all that in secret learning documentation about all of these techniques. And as a bonus, uh, the question that you didn't ask, but I think it's really important. So why use one? Why don't we use all of them? The answer to that is simple because a lot of times you cannot use all of them. And, uh, and a lot of times you don't have enough time in order to use them uh, all in once. So in the machine learning, it's not important. Uh, it's really important to resolve the problem and not to overthink about it. So if you have a performance of your algorithm that's 82%, that's good enough. So uh, making it from 82 to 96, it will take a lot of time. So it's better to tackle the problem because having the data with 82% of accuracy is much better than, uh, than uh, making decisions based on your, uh, based on your uh, hunch or something like that. So beware of that or overthinking or like doing and adding all of these uh, models. Uh, you can go for the exercise. Uh, you can go and try all of them on, on the one of the data sets. And that's fine because that way you can learn all of them and you will know what are the pros and cons of every of them. I hope you like uh, today's video. If you have any more questions that you would like me to answer in the next week, please leave in the comment below and I will be delighted to answer all of your questions from the machine learning world. And thank you for watching and see you next week. Bye.